first snow. The gate slammed shut as I scurried off past the guards using my light-bending gifts. Regardless of the consequences, this day wasn't something I wanted to miss. Winter had come, and I needed to experience it firsthand. The evening was cold and surreal. Clouds dimmed the sun, giving way to the coming nightfall that didn't transgress against the beauty of falling snow from the sky above. I was finally alone on the outside of the protective field, enjoying the air and dark clouds. It was rare for it to snow this time of year. Winter infrequently brought snow along with it near the kingdom of Varinia. Many vampires lack the empathy to identify and sense the underlying magnificence in it. However, I took full liberties in all the glamour these small, soft, white sprinkles of ice had to offer. It amazed me, as did many things outside the palace, which I was forbidden to leave most of the time. I felt like a caged animal for most of my life, ready to break my chains and venture out into the world. My mother, Queen Maria, who ruled over the kingdom of Varinia, made sure I was closely watched day in and out. While I was pampered and spoiled within the gates of our kingdom, I still wanted more. I wanted freedom. Princess Anastasia, are you out here? shouted the head gate guard Balthazar. It was no easy task, having snuck past him to enjoy the winter snow outside the kingdom. If he found me out here alone, there'd be no doubt he'd tell my mother. As one of the rare vampires in our world who possessed the gift of light bending, I could easily sneak back in as long as Baldazar wasn't at his post. Summoning my gifts, I warped the light around my body and faded into invisibility. I watched as Baldazar left to his post to circle the outside gates. No doubt he was searching for me. The last thing I wanted to feel was the backhand of my mother for disobeying her stupid rules. Baldazar approached the white-coated tree I was hiding behind. I slowly backed away, knelt, and picked up a handful of snow from the ground. He turned the corner of the tree, calling my name, backing away farther. I cocked my hand back and tossed a snowball right at his face. What the hell? He shouted, stumbling. I tried to hold my laughter as I sprinted toward the gate. He'd be able to see my footprints in the snow. I had to get back into Varinia before he realized what was going on. Do you think you can outsmart me? I ran right into his chest face first. It was almost as if I'd hit a steel wall. Your light-bending gifts are useless out here in this snow, princess, he said. He grabbed my arm, causing my invisibility to fade. Damn, he was fast. Unhand me, I commanded. He released me and bowed slightly. You know the law, Baldazar. I'm not to be touched by anyone, especially men, I reminded him. With his gaze lowered, he cleared his throat and sighed. The law also dictates that you're not supposed to go outside the gates of Arinia without express permission from the queen, he said. I fixed the collar on the black cape he was wearing and rubbed his bald head softly. I was just enjoying the snow, I said innocently. He removed my hand and backed away. My princess, I'm afraid I have no choice but to inform your mother. She called for you an hour ago. The queen is going to want to know where you've been, he said. My mood eyes transitioned from gray to a stark yellow. Strict and ruthless in her parenting, just as she was in her rule, my mother would probably lash me if she found out that I'd gone outside the gates. Please don't tell her where I went. I was just enjoying the view of the snow, I pleaded. He looked me in the eyes without a hint of emotion. Rules are rules, I'm afraid, he said coldly. These rules were driving me insane. In my 19 years, I'd never understood why I was never allowed outside the kingdom on my own. The gates opened. A stiff, icy breeze hit both of us. Nice night for a walk, don't you think? It's uncommon for it to snow around here. How about we stroll through the forest? We can talk about the numbers for the next offering outside the gates, said a man approaching us with the Count of Arias. Baldazar caught a glimpse of the Count and bowed. However, I wasn't concerned with the Count but with the man who just spoke. I couldn't get a good look at him, but his long black locks that weaved in and out of view from behind the count were all too visible. Baldazar, Princess Anastasia, good evening to you both, said the count. I nodded to him. Where's your mother? Isn't she supposed to be with you when you leave the palace? He asked. Now I truly was screwed. My misdeeds weren't just confined to Baldazar anymore. I lowered my gaze and tried to come up with the best lie I could. Um, yes, she is, 
but she's... The princess snuck out of the palace and went into the forest alone. I'm taking her back to her mother right now, said Baldassar. Damned snitch. Why would you go outside the palace alone? It's dangerous out there. A dagger wolf could spring out of the ground and attack you, said the count. He was clearly trying to scare me, but I knew that dagger wolves were hibernating around this time. I just wanted to walk through the snow. I never get the opportunity to do anything I want. I feel like I'm suffocating, I said. The Count ran his hand through my white hair and smiled. I understand how you must feel. Nevertheless, you're too important to the coven and me. My unborn son awaits you, Princess. We must safeguard you at all cost. We don't want you to end up like your si- I mean, we don't want you getting hurt, he said. I gazed at him strangely. My what? What were you going to say? The man behind the Count stepped into my view and approached. The Count Darius is just worried about you, Princess. I think it's best if you just return home to the palace. I'm sure we can forget about this little ordeal. No harm's been done, the man said. I stood there speechless as the snow fell from the sky more densely. I couldn't believe my eyes. Who, who was he? But the rules, Baldazar began to say. What's the point of rules if we're not allowed to break them every once in a while? The man winked at me with his bright, hypnotic golden eyes. My knees buckled with a small gesture. Excuse me, but who are you? Baldazar's brows wrinkled at the man. The Count patted him on the back and smiled proudly. Oh, my apologies, Baldazar. Allow me to introduce the new chief negotiator for the coven during the offering, Alessandro Mwangi. Alessandro grinned and bowed slightly. No, please forgive me. I'm the one who should apologize. I didn't mean to take that tone with you, said Baldazar. Alessandro shook Baldazar's hand. Don't worry about it. Your reputation precedes you. I've heard how much of a stickler you are for the rules, Alessandro said. His well-toned arms and manly handshake forced my eyes to change colors from gray to dark blue. I had to avert my gaze so they wouldn't notice. I was in sheer awe. I'd never seen a man so beautiful in my whole 19 years. He was shirtless, and his thick locks of hair dangled down his back. His muscular chest, broad shoulders, beautifully pleasing facial features, and ripped abs offset the beauty of his pure, dark skin. Why hadn't I ever seen this man before? Where had he been hiding? Alessandro. His name is Alessandro. I whispered to myself. Well, Anastasia, it seems like our chief negotiator has just negotiated you out of trouble. Run home and don't let us catch you out here again without permission, said the Count. Y yes yes of course, I said. I raised my head and Alessandro and I locked eyes for a moment that felt like an eternity. He smiled at me and bowed. I couldn't take whatever emotions were bubbling in my gut. After one last glance, I sprinted through the gate toward the palace. I'd have to find out more about that man. I needed to know who he was. Mother and the Archduke My mother, the queen, entered my room and slammed the door shut behind her. Where the hell were you? asked my mother. I could tell she was pissed by the tone of her voice. Her eyes flared red and her fangs were elongated. The temper of this woman had always drawn a wedge between us and caused our relationship to suffer. I was at the Institute of Histories, learning about Mark and Dei, the first. I understand that it's important for the nobility to be well versed in our history and laws, I said. She licked her fangs. The Institute of Histories, you say? Yes, I said, without finching. Oh, I'm proud you took the initiative to learn the ways of the vampire on your own. Tell me, what subjects under Mark and Dei did you research? She asked, smiling. I racked my brain, trying to figure out what to say. Her eyes never left mine. I could tell she was looking for artifice in my demeanor. I learned of the event where our great leader rid the world of all democratic and republican forms of government during the fall of humanity and installed the global aristocratic rule that has given us a lasting peace for close to a thousand years, I said. My mother drew closer, causing me to take a few steps back. And what is that aristocratic rule called? The coven of vampires, I stuttered. Her manner and piercing gaze were making me nervous. And since the death of my mate, Mark and Dei, the first ruler of the coven, who has ruled our great monarchy? Her eyes continued to glow red. You, mother. And what do you think this ruler does with liars? She hissed. 
She advanced until my back was flush with the large black glass window of my room. Mother, I... I... She backhanded me across the face and I fell to the floor, nose bleeding. If you ever go outside the gates of our kingdom again without telling me, I'll lock you in this room until your hundredth birthday, she threatened. My fangs extended. Now get up and tend to your lessons. Do not disobey me again, child. I stood and wiped the blood from my nose. How the hell had she found out where I'd gone? No one could have told her before I got back. Did she have a tracking device on me or something? I sidestepped her and sat on my bed, holding my nose. She turned her back on me and walked toward the door, showing not an ounce of sympathy for the pain she'd caused me. Why are you so cruel? I murmured. She spun around and glared at me devilishly. What did you say? We locked eyes. My nose had healed from the blow she'd given me. I'd had enough. I said, why are you so damned cruel? I bellowed. With her vampire speed, she appeared inches from me. She grasped my neck with her claws and slammed me onto the bed. One day you will give birth to the most powerful vampire who's ever lived. Even more powerful than Mark and Day himself. You may think I'm hard on you, Anastasia, but I'm just preparing you to be the mother of a ruthless god whom all will bow before. You want me to be like you, but I'll never be what you are, I said in defiance. She climbed on top of me and squeezed my neck tighter. Oh, you will, one way or another. The queen hissed and scratched my neck with her claws before jumping off me. You are weak, child. In this world, the weak perish. You will learn the ways of the vampires sooner or later. My mother walked out of my room and slammed the door shut. Blood dripped from my neck where she dug her claws in. I sat up, put my face in my palms, and cried. This wasn't the life I was meant to live. I was a prisoner in my body and mind. There had to be a way out, some sort of reprieve. My sanity depended on it. Are you all right in there? A voice called from the other side of my door. I knew the voice. However, he was the last person I wanted to see. Go away, I said, sniffing. The door creaked open. Archduke Oha stuck his head into my room and gazed at me. His long reddish black hair was draped over one eye. I said, go away, I repeated firmly. The Archduke caught my view and entered the room, then closed the door behind him. I heard you and your mother arguing. I just came to check on you, he said. Ohas's false sense of empathy wasn't what I needed. He only cared about one thing, and he'd been hounding me for it since I was 15 years of age. Are you all right? He asked. I sighed. I'm fine. Now leave. I rolled my eyes. The Archduke flicked his hair from over his eye. With his wanting gaze, he stared at me and sat on the far end of the bed. I saw everything I needed to in his mood eye shifts. This wasn't the time or place for his come-ons. I know your mother can be intense. However, she's doing what's best for you and the coven. You play a vital role in our future, Anastasia. You'll understand better when you're older, he said. I shuffled farther away from him to the opposite end of the bed. His eyes transitioned from their nature hazel to light blue. I gritted my teeth in preparation for what was coming. Thanks for the lecture. Now, please, would you leave? I want to be alone. I said, this time with anger in my tone. With a devious smile, the Archduke repositioned himself and scooted closer to me. I was flush against the bedpost with no more room to create space between us. It's a real shame you're about to turn 20 in three days. We should have got to know one another more intimately 10 years ago, he said sensually. A knot formed in my gut. The feeling of disgust almost made me gag. I didn't want to believe the rumors surrounding the Archduke, but it seemed as if he'd just confirmed them. He moved his face closer to mine and placed his hand on my inner thigh. His touch repulsed me. The white silk nightgown I was wearing made it easy for him to caress my bare skin. Was this my life? To be abused by my mother in one instance and to be molested by high-ranking members of the coven in the next? His continued caressing made my eyes burn bright red. You have the fire in you. I like that. Your mother has restricted anyone from teaching you the sexual ways of the vampire, for obvious reasons. Look at me, princess. I would be more than willing to volunteer for the privilege when the time is right, he snickered. My fangs grew as he moved his hand closer to my private area and drew his lips closer to mine. 
I dug under my pillow and grabbed the dagger I kept for moments like these. So, you wanted to know me more intimately when I was nine years old? I put the dagger to his neck swiftly and pushed it firmly against his skin. He gulped and threw his hands in the air. What do you plan on doing with that, princess? I'm going to cut out your damned esophagus if you don't take your vile, disgusting hands off me, I threatened. He laughed and backed away. I grabbed his collar and continued to press the blade to his neck. If he weren't the Archduke of the Coven of Vampires, I would have plunged this dagger into his heart long ago. I didn't mean you any harm. I know you must remain a virgin until the Count of Orias produces a son for you to wed, but that will take decades, he said with an abhorrent, deceitful grin. The look on his face pissed me off even more. Blood began to trickle on the blade as I pressed it harder to his skin. Get out! I released his collar and pushed him toward the door. As you wish. He bowed with a sly grin, backed away, and walked out. I slammed the door shut, then locked it and threw the dagger to the floor. That was the closest he'd ever come to going too far. I immediately shed my clothes and ran into the shower to get his vile stench off of my body. Somehow, I had to get the hell out of this place. There was only so much a girl could take, and I may have just reached my limit this day. The repressive and authoritarian nature of the coven was wearing on me. I had to escape by any means necessary. First Conversation I wandered the streets of Arinia near the palace, taking in the sights as the snow layered on the protective field that surrounded our kingdom. The red glow from the shield gave the snow an enchanting luminescence. If only I could see it from the outside. Baldazar was so damned tight on the gate entrance, there was no way for me to escape the same way I had before. Even though the snow was beautiful, it would nullify my light-bending gifts the moment I left the gates. Traces of my footsteps would be found. It seemed as if I truly was trapped here. Princess Anastasia, is that you? A masculine voice called in the distance. I turned around and put my hand on the dagger I kept on my hip just in case it was the Archduke again. Yes, it is you. I'm surprised the Queen allowed you outside of the palace. I heard about what happened, unfortunately. My jaw dropped when the man came into view. Of all the crap that had happened to me lately, this was a jolt of good fortune I needed. He approached me and bowed. It was Alessandro. He was shirtless just as before, and his body was glistening wet. The smell of him threw my senses into a whirlwind of pleasure. Sorry about my appearance, Princess. I was just heading home for some blood bags. My living complex isn't far from the palace. There's a group of us skinny dipping in a nearby lake, he said. I tried to keep my knees from shaking. That would explain why he was only wearing a pair of wet boxers. W where is the lake? I stuttered. He smiled. Are you okay? I attempted to gather my bearings. He was making me nervous as hell. Yes, I'm, I'm fine. I gulped. By the way, I'm sorry I missed your birthday celebration. The Count of Arias keeps me busy. Allow me to make it up to you? His sweet gaze made my blood warm. How would you make it up to me? I asked. Well, I know you're the princess, but if you're willing, I can take you to the lake. It must get boring inside the palace. He laughed nervously. I tried to hide my excitement and played down my enthusiasm. Sure, I'll go, I said. Great, let me get those blood bags and I'll meet you here. I'll only be a moment. He turned to walk away. Wait, why not just take me with you? I asked. To my place? He looked at me, surprised. Sure, why not? All right, hold on then. He grabbed me by the arm and threw me on his back so fast I didn't realize what was happening until it was done. Hold on, princess. He took off, running toward the buildings across the way from the palace. My body was pressed against his hard, wet, muscled back. My fangs grew and I had to fight the temptation to bite him. I couldn't believe this was happening. His scent made my mouth water. I planted my right cheek in his sweet-smelling hair and closed my eyes. I had never felt something so sumptuous. I'd sleep in the texture of his hair for days if I could. Here we are. We stopped at a massive complex where most of the lower-ranking nobles lived. I'd never been here before, so it was nice to see it up close. I climbed down from his back and stared at the architecture of the buildings. The complex had the design of large, sleek black towers made of stone, silver, and dark glass as high as I could see. It was stunning. Would you like to come up or do you prefer to wait here? I'll only be a moment if you want to wait, he said. I was apprehensive. His alluring eyes made me anxious, and I was afraid of what I'd do if we were alone in his home together. 
Would I be able to control my urges? I'll only be a minute, he said. Before he could enter the building, I took his hand and held him back. I I'll come with you, I whispered, stuttering. Say that again, I couldn't quite hear you, he said. A hopeful glint in his eyes twinkled, which made me even more nervous. I'll go with you, I said more brazenly. He smiled, revealing his beautiful sharp fangs. Are you sure it's all right? I don't want the queen on my ass if we get caught, he joked. I looped my arms with his and rested my head on his shoulder. She'll never find out. Don't worry, I assured him. Goosebumps formed on my skin when he inhaled and exhaled slowly into my hair. Y you're making me nervous, princess, he said. Alessandro was tall and hence towered over me. I rubbed his dark, muscled arms and gazed up at him, my mood eyes turning a bright yellow. Why? What's wrong? I asked. He pulled away. I don't think you should come up, and to tell you the truth, I think this was a bad idea. Please forgive me. He bowed and backed away from me toward the building. Wait! What are you doing? Did I do something wrong? Alessandro turned to face me and took a knee in prostration. His locks of hair covered his enchanting face and his mood eyes. You are Anastasia of Irinia, princess of the Coven of Vampires and heir to the throne. You are promised to the son of the Orias' clan. I answer to the Count of Orias. If he saw us together like this, he'd have my head. I'm sorry, my princess, but I can't allow myself to be taken with you. I am but a servant to the Coven and not worthy of your grace, he proclaimed. I stared at him, taken aback by what he'd said. Once again, Coven laws were dictating my life and my associations. This was the last time I'd let these rules get in the way of what I desired. I felt a connection, an instant attraction with this man the moment we'd met, and I wasn't going to allow my title to stop me from getting closer to him. How about we talk about this upstairs? I suggested. For a moment, I could hear him gulping from where I stood. B but my princess, please stop calling me that. My name is Anastasia. You can address me by my first name just as you were doing a moment ago, I said. Are you sure that's wise? He was still on one knee, refusing to look at me. I walked over and squatted before him. Look at me, Alessandro. I ran my hand over his hair until my index finger met his chin. I cupped his jaw and raised his head so that I could get a better view of his mood eyes. To my surprise, they were shining yellow just as mine were. The feelings between us were undeniable at that point. Let's go upstairs, I suggested a second time. Night fell, and the protective field deactivated, which allowed the winter snow to fall on us. Alessandro rose and stared at me. The snow began to accumulate on my hair and shoulders. The yellow in his eyes shone even brighter with each passing moment. I've never seen anything so, so beautiful, he whispered. With his robust and unflinching arm, he grabbed me by the waist and pulled me close. I was so fragile in his embrace. Your hair and skin are the same color as the snow. You're so enchanting, he said. Not as enchanting as you, I let slip from my mouth. I pressed my lips together and shied away. A passion was boiling in me that I'd never felt before. What was happening to me? Perhaps he was right. If we kept this up, there would be no telling where things would end up. We'd probably end up violating Coven Law 001, which prohibited romantic love. My mother would probably beat me bloody if I betrayed her to that extent. Uh, Alessandro... Aren't your friends waiting for you back at the lake? I asked anxiously. I'm sure they'll get along without me. It's not as if they're going to die of thirst while I'm gone. Come, let's go inside, he said. I took a step back. I, I should be getting home. He bit his bottom lip and gazed at me with a loss for words. But you just said, yes, I know, but something's happening to me. I, I don't know what it is. I turned away from him and tried to walk off. Wait, Anastasia. He took hold of my hand. Please don't go. We stared at each other for a moment. It was clear to me just then. I wanted him. We wanted each other. Come inside just for a while. Let's just talk and hang out for a bit. My hands trembled. The more we stayed close to one another, the harder it'd be for me to be apart from him. But it was difficult to fight the sensation screaming within me. Screw it. Okay, Alessandro. Just to talk, he smiled. We clasped hands and entered the building. My emotions were on a roller coaster, swaying up and down and back and forth. I never thought I'd be in a situation like this. What would become of this? Of us?
Confessions. Hand in hand, Alessandro and I ran through the woods of Arinia until we stopped at a large swanberry tree near a frozen lake. Come, he said softly. We climbed the tree slowly as not to make any noise. This experience was an adventure I certainly didn't think I'd be having in all of my cocooned pampered existence. It had been a few months since my first real encounter with Alessandro. That night when I accepted the invitation into his home, we'd stayed up talking for hours. The way he discussed his life goals intrigued me. The sweet scent of his skin, coupled with the way he'd humbled himself in the face of all his accomplishments, forced me to fall for him. I wanted to submerge myself deep into his essence without restraint or consequence. I'd never felt anything such as this. Now, he stared at me as I stepped to the edge of the branch of the tree we were standing on. I looked down below. I can't believe we're doing this, I whispered. Shh, you're going to scare away the fish, said Alessandro with a smile. We stood atop the tree, overlooking a frozen lake. The fish under the thin layer of ice swam around aimlessly, utterly oblivious to what Alessandro and I were about to do. You're setting me loose, Alessandro. I've never done anything like this before, I said softly. We took each other by the hand and squeezed tightly. Are you ready? He asked. If you are, I responded apprehensively. He smiled and looked deep into my eyes. On the count of three, his tone of voice gave me confidence. O okay, I stuttered, bracing myself. One, two, ah, I exclaimed. As we leaped off the branch, down we fell until our bodies broke through the thin sheet of ice over the lake. The fish scattered following our impact. What we had just done finally hit me as we sank deeper into the water. He'd purposefully jumped on two to surprise me. After the initial shock of our invasion into their habitat, the fish with their exquisite shining gold scales began to swarm around us in waves. Alessandro swam toward the bottom of the lake while I floated toward the surface. The water felt magnificent in my hair and on my skin. The dark clouds had completely blocked out the sun, which allowed the coven to open the sky to us by deactivating the force field. The snow gently fell onto the lake and all around us. I was amazed by the winter that surrounded me. Never wanting this to end would be an understatement. I loved it here. For you, Alessandro said, surprising me. He flicked his locks of hair behind his shoulders and presented me with a gift. Where did you find this? I asked. It was a crystallier flower, the same color as the fish, shiny and golden. At the bottom of the lake, I thought you might like it, he said. I took it from his hand and inhaled the scent of it. The fragrance of the flower was still there. I'd had no idea crystallite flowers could grow underwater and retain their fragrance. Alessandro plucked it out of my hand and placed the flower in my hair near my right ear. Words alone couldn't begin to convey just how beautiful you are, Anastasia, he whispered. My fangs protruded upon hearing his central description of me. From the first night we spent alone at his place, I always tried to keep my distance. The more he pushed, the more I pulled away. It wasn't that I was afraid of what my mother might do to me, but what the coven may do to him. Every day I felt myself growing more and more emotionally attached to this beautiful, bold vampire. Despite my feelings, I knew if we took it one step further, it would mean the end for both of us. I had no other choice but to be cold and logical. Our lives would be put at risk if I didn't. Are you alright? He said. I gazed at him shyly. I didn't want him to see my protruding fangs or mood eyes. They would give me away on the spot. Why do you keep doing this? He asked me sternly. Doing what? Hiding from me. How am I hiding from you? I'm right here. No, you're not. Your body is here, but your mind and emotions are somewhere else. The anguish in his eyes was all too obvious. You know why, Alessandro, I said indifferently. He caressed my face with his steady, cold hand. The golden lights of his eyes never broke contact with mine. Damn, he was so beautiful. There's no one here but us, my princess. We've been together almost every day since I saw you outside the palace that night. Stop hiding your feelings from me, and I'll do the same. I touched the hand he had on my cheek and looked up at him nervously. W what feelings do you have? His face turned somber with erotic undertones in his eyes. He took his hand off me then swam a few feet away and removed his black leather pants. What are, are you doing? I whispered. His dark skin illuminated with an aura of gold, the same color as his eyes. Uh, Alessandro, I stuttered. His body freshly nude, 
He swam back to me and took my waist in both arms. I couldn't believe what was happening. Ask me, he said softly. His scent was driving me to the brink of insanity. If I didn't get away from him soon, I'd end up losing control. Alessandro's neck was calling to my fangs. Ask me, he repeated, smiling. Ask you what? His hard body was pressed firmly against mine, making me that much more anxious. Need I speak the words? He asked. Tell me, Alessandro, please, I said desperately. The next words that come out of my mouth will be a violation of coven law. But, but we can't, I said. My hands were trembling. He held me tighter, causing me to inhale the ecstasy of his scent. No ruling body should have dominion over the hearts of men and women, he said authoritatively. Then tell me, what is it that you want me to do? Admit to yourself and me your true feelings. Say the words, Anastasia. It's been three months, and I think I know you well enough to see that you're holding back from me. I can't stand silent and watch as you slowly push me away. Why do you think I brought you here today? But Alessandro, you, you know I'm promised to someone else. Someone who hasn't even been born yet. Forget about the coven. Forget about rules, laws, and all else meant to suppress a vampire's passion and focus on the here and now. Tell me, Anastasia, do you love me? He asked. The word love hit me with the force and swiftness of a lightning bolt. All his emotions were laid before me, unabashed and without forethought. I'd never seen a vampire so brazen in all my years. With his claws, Alessandro tore the white dress I was wearing from my body and let it float away in the cold, icy water. Kiss me and I'll show you, I said. Are we to make love this day? If we do this, there'd be no turning back. All laws would be broken, he cautioned. Then let them be broken. I have the gift of contact mind, thought. With one touch of my hand, you'll know everything I feel for you. We'll be one in body and mind, I said. As you wish. The sky will be set aflame and the mountains will turn to dust, he said poetically. I placed my fingers on his forehead. He drew nearer, causing us to kiss passionately. The mind-thought connection was established. All that I was rushed through him, and the entirety of his essence rushed through me in return. He loved me just as much as I loved him. The rules were shattered, and there was no going back. I would give myself to him for all time. Our immortal bond would last as long as we were together. Anastasia, he whispered. I pressed my mouth to his neck and sank my fangs into him. Oh, he gasped. I wrapped my legs around his muscled body. The taste of his blood was mind-numbingly succulent. He held me as tight as he could. I love you, he whispered in my ear. I released my fangs and kissed his lips with my blood-stained mouth. I loved him. I was his for all time. I'd longed for a bond like this all my life. With him, I was everything. And to him, I'd be everything. On the run. The doors were closed off. I shut the windows and pulled the black silk drapes closed. Since our time at the lake, we'd been inseparable. I'd never been infatuated with someone like this before. What had he done to me? I'd always been told that romance and love would lead to hardship, and in some extreme cases, death. But how could this be wrong? How could any of it be wrong? Anastasia, are you there? I heard someone whisper from the balcony of my room. Tonight would be the first time I'd allow Alessandro into my quarters. My mother and everyone else was out of the palace this evening. The coven had released a few humans from the offering into the Shadowlands to hunt them for sport. Because of that, most of the palace was empty. Now was the perfect chance for Alessandro and me to be truly alone in the comfort of the palace. The frequent visits I made to his home had many nobles raising questions I didn't want to answer. We were also running out of places to hide in Verinia. And thanks to Baldazar, I wasn't allowed anywhere near the gates. I opened my door one last time and made sure no one was around. Wait there, Alessandro. Give me one second, I whispered. I gazed from right to left a few more times. The coast was clear. I shut the door, locked it, sped over to my window, and let Alessandro in. The second he stepped foot into my room, we embraced in an intense hug. We hadn't seen each other in almost two weeks. The distance and secrecy were killing me. I've been longing for you, Anastasia. I can't be away from you anymore, I just can't, Alessandro said. 
I kissed the center of his chest and looped one of his locks of hair around my finger. How can we be together? People are starting to get suspicious of us, I said desperately. He stroked my hair softly. With his beautiful golden eyes, he stared into me as if to call my soul to unite with his. I wanted to lose myself with him. I wanted to be with him. Always. The courting moon is our only answer. If we join in the light of its magnificent rays, there's no way the coven can deny us, he said. That's impossible, Alessandro, I said almost tearfully. Why? Why is that impossible? The courting moon is two years away, and if we were to join, the coven would kill you, or worse yet, put us both into re-education, I said. I'm willing to take that risk. His voice was stern. We can't wait two more years. You know what plans the coven has for me. They won't let anyone or anything stop them from their goals. I may be the princess, but I'm not above imprisonment or even death in my mother's eyes, I said. So, what do you propose we do? He grabbed my backside gently and pulled me against his hard yet sensual body. We go into the Shadowlands and never look back. He pressed his lips to my forehead and kissed me delicately. You'd be willing to leave your mother and the coven behind? He asked. I've known nothing but torment and oppression since my fangs grew to full length when I was a child. There's nothing here for me but hardship. You're the only glimpse of hope I've ever encountered in this dark world. In your arms is where I belong. I said devotedly. Alessandro's eyes transitioned from their natural gold to a light blue. He held me tighter and stared into my eyes. Do you love me, Anastasia? I mean, do you truly love me? I caressed his lips with a thumb. We gazed at each other without blinking. I've never experienced love before. So if this feeling, this longing to never let you go, never be without you is what they call love, then yes. I do love you, Alessandro. I revealed all that I was to you at the lake. Do you remember the day by the gate when Baldazar caught you outside in the snow? Yes. Why? Well, I saw you sneak out that day. I was watching you from the tower of the palace. The Count of Orias and I were having a meeting with Archduke Ohas. The Archduke and his pretentious monologue were driving me insane. I watched as you danced in the snow, trying to catch the flakes that fell from the sky with your index finger. It was the most beautiful sight I ever saw. When Baldazar closed in on you, I suggested to the Count that we continue the meeting outside the gate. The Archduke refused to come. What are you saying? I asked, my eyes teary with love I felt growing for him. I'm saying, the first time we met wasn't a coincidence. I didn't want you to get in trouble with your mother, so I intervened. But I never knew the first encounter would become this, would become love, he said. Tell me, Alessandro. Tell me what you want to say. The night I invited you to my place and we stayed up all night talking, I knew then. I knew I'd fallen in love with you. I want you to be my mate, to be my wife. Those feelings were solidified when you drank my blood at the lake. It felt as if my cold heart had palpitated briefly. Your wife? Yes, I want you to be with me always, he confessed. I wiped a single tear that ran down his handsome face with my thumb and kissed him without restraint. Our tongues overlapped and caressed one another softly, passionately. His kiss and embrace were like paradise. I never wanted to let go. This cannot be! This cannot be! shouted a man from my balcony. The black glass from my window shattered and in flew Archduke Ohas. Both of us stood there, shocked. The glass crumbled under his feet with each step he took toward us. This bastard had been spying on me. I heard it. I heard everything. You violated coven law, he bellowed. Alessandro shielded me from the Archduke and stood his ground firmly. Screw coven law. We're leaving this decadent, corrupt kingdom. The Archduke smiled and neared toward us. The only reason I don't kill you where you stand is that you possess a unique form of mind thought that allows you to see humans' minds. Your gifts are invaluable to the coven, Alessandro. However, I know fates much, much worse than death. Do you believe a small, frail vampire like you would be able to defeat me in battle? Challenged Alessandro. No, said the Archduke laughing. Then step aside, I said. I'm afraid I can't do that. Alessandro walked right into the Archduke's face and growled. Move, or I'll make you move, he threatened. The Archduke licked his fangs. Within the next 30 seconds, this place will be surrounded by Varinian protectors. The Count of Arias is already on his way. 
<laughs> Did you think I wouldn't call the cavalry? He laughed. Without hesitating, Alessandro punched the Archduke in the center of his chest, sending him flying out the window he'd entered through. We have to get the hell out of here, Alessandro said. Frantic with my adrenaline rushing, I hopped onto his back and held on tightly. He jumped out the window, high into the sky. We landed about a hundred feet away from the palace on a nearby building, and I used my light-bending gifts to hide us from sight. I trust you, Alessandro. Let's go, I said. With his vampire speed, he bolted toward the gate. Many coven members were returning from the hunt, which was extremely convenient for us. It meant the gates would be wide open for us to make our escape. Stop them, we heard the Archduke shout. Before Baldazar could react, we'd sped past him deep into the neutral territory toward the human city of Hymen. I'll find you! No matter where you go or how far you travel, I'll find you! Screamed the Archduke from afar. We ignored his threats and kept running. The choice had been made. We'd have no other option but to go beyond this kingdom and into the Shadowlands. It was my hope we'd be safe there from the coven. As long as we were together, nothing else mattered. Alessandro was my world now, and I would give myself to him for as long as fate permitted. If the Shadowlands were to become our home, then so be it. I would never give him up. Together was where we belonged, for all time. And I'll